Welcome to The Trade. This is your host, Theo Goodman. I'm here today with Widespread BTC, and we're going to talk about Bitcoin, Forex, gold, silver, and take a look at some of the charts. Thanks for coming on today, Widespread. Hey, Theo. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excellent. So I've seen this chart you've got up a few times on your Twitter, and you've posted around. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I've been just studying this fractal from the... Um, I guess this is the weekly chart from when we were in the the 240 down to you know sixty dollar range, and you know I started watched it, didn't really think it was going to work out, but the more we follow it, the the more um, kind of annotations I've added. Uh, so I did a, a little small you know study, I guess, to just look at like the major support and resistance rejections that we had on that last uh, the last fractal, and, and you know we had. Uh, if you see there the red arrows, uh, you know, four resistance rejections, and so far we've had three support rejections, uh, and then the little small uh, green green arrow, just that little inside bar formation, that then our range tightens, stays within that that big daily bar, um, and that's where we are now. If you look at the bottom, we've had that inside bar rejection. And we are sideways in in that range that was set by that daily candle, that's here around you know 475 down to around around what four 420. It's kind of hard to read it on this chart. I don't have all the numbers memorized, but uh, regardless, we're staying within that bar. And you know, I'm kind of curious if we're going to see uh, that last support rejection, if we're going to retest support before we go up. Uh, just kind of on a smaller time frame, I, I guess. I'll look back here. It looks like we've got a, on a daily chart, we've got this rising support trend line. So uh, I'm expecting that we're either going to have this breakout here very soon. I mean, our weekly weekly candle is going to be opening up here very soon. And, you know, we're either going to pop through this resistance and go ahead and, and move somewhere, or we might get a, if we follow this fractal, we, we might even get a, get a stop run to the downside. And I, I've got some kind of uh, tongue in cheek, uh, you know, targets there, you know, full support retest, uh, you know, a stop run where we kind of blame a random news event. And then if we do get a, you know, like the, the equivalent of the Silk Road crash, you know, we're going to have to have some news to get there. So I've, I put some kind of sarcastic um, things down there, but basically uh, that's a support level I think would hold if we do have some, some kind of news event that kind of comes around to shake out the longs. I mean, if you look at uh, Bitfinex, our longs are, really high. Uh, the last time we were, we were up that high, we, we crashed back down to, I think that was our, our, our kind of flash crash that Bitfinex had back to 150. So there's always the possibility that we, you know, the, the bags could be too heavy and we end up having to shake out some longs. I think it's right. the, the fractal would definitely confirm that. Uh, but you know, we had a big news event before. Uh, so, I, I think it's kind of an either or. I think if we don't get a news event, we could eventually just kind of slowly uh, build that rising support trend line and find ourselves above 470, and then it's just all rockets go. So okay. that's kind of my thought for Bitcoin. I just want to ask you really quick, just because some of the viewers might not know what you mean by there is a lot of longs at Bitfinex, or we haven't seen longs that high. Uh, tell us what you mean. I think you're referring to the swaps, right? Excuse me, uh, margin margin lending, margin lending. Yeah, I'm pulling that up now. I think it should show, but uh, the margin lending. Yeah, so if if too many people are are taking out uh, margin longs, uh, well, number one, people are going to be trying to gather those positions because all of a sudden now they have to renew those swaps. Uh, you know, when you borrow from somebody on Bitfinex, it's only a temporary. Uh, deal. So as you hold that position, not only you pay an interest, but as more of the as more of the fiat gets used up, the interest rate goes up, and then as your swaps renew, they renew at a higher interest rate. So uh, it looks like we've actually had had the longs go down a little bit recently in the last few days. So, uh, but regardless, it's still pretty high. I'm looking at a 31 million, but. You know, people go back and forth about what how important this number really is. I just think that at 
at any point where you're sitting right underneath resistance, you're probably going to be pretty heavy on your longs. So it all really depends on, on the, the nice thing about a situation like this, where you've got this nice range contraction is that you should have a good setup in either direction. If you wait for some confirmation, uh, because hopefully you'll be right near resistance or support and you'll have a target that's farther away and your risk reward will end up being uh, profitable. But, you know, I'd almost say that now is if you're not already in a long position from the bottom of this consolidation range, uh, wait for wait for us to pop through resistance before you, you know, load load up. Right. So. OK, great. So you also have a um, little chart about USD JPY. Yes, I do. Uh, so we, we had that huge move. Uh, what is it? What was that on the right at the end of April? And it was just a huge impulse move uh, based on uh, a lack of news. Really, there wasn't really any particular news that came out of uh, the Bank of Japan, which apparently the market was waiting on some news. And we just completely fell through had a huge impulse move and I, I kind of labeled on my chart uh, based on the 15 minute consolidations that we had right after that impulse move. It looks like we're pretty much banging right against the bottom of the order block at 109.35. So I was actually looking for a pullback earlier. I, I saw um, I saw the second retest, saw the double top. I took a short and I ended up getting stopped back out. Luckily, I put a trailing stop on it instead of just setting the stop at break even. Uh, so it took me out with some profit, but at the same time, we retested that top now and we've closed right at the lows. Uh, I, I really think that it all depends on whether the support holds or not, or whether we try to do do another retest, maybe to the 50%, uh, you know, along this, along this consolidation. But uh, it looks like we're setting ourselves up for a retest between, you know, to have 107.5. I would not be surprised if we end up you know, making a big range here from, you know, 106.8 to 109.35, just kind of like we've done in the past on, uh, here, let me pull it up, kind of, kind of like this uh, and kind of respect that order block for a while because when we break into that order block, uh, you know, that impulse move, uh, I feel like it's kind of clear sailing to the top. So until the market's really ready to let it go all the way up to 111, 112, we're probably going to get rejected somewhere around that 10935 resistance. So that's my read on USD JPY. Okay, well thanks for that. All right, I'm going to go over a few markets really briefly. Uh, first of all, we've got the silver uh, USD price and uh, you know it did hit a high over at 1777, 1780. And I think that it's likely that it goes and tested test this daily daily Cajunson um, here around sixteen fifty. That's on the daily. And uh, here we've got gold, gold on the weekly, and uh, it also made a high around thirteen hundred and six. And it's on the weekly. I think that uh, it's already tested something, lo some low, some area on the weekly where it could bounce from here. It probably will consolidate sideways and then test that again. If it doesn't manage to bust through this thirteen oh six in the next few weeks, then uh, I think that it's possible that it could even go down and test uh, eleven hundred, eleven ninety. Here I've got marked on the chart, but um, you know, it's test this area over here around twelve fifty. Uh, bounced off that. And I think maybe a little bit of sideways and then test if it's going to be able to bust through this 1306 or not. For a little perspective, here's the gold on the monthly. And yeah, you can see that um, there's almost a, uh, a cross here, uh, the Cajunson cross over here. So that, that looks pretty good. If that were to cross, that would be a bullish cross. And then you could see um, in order for that to cross, it would probably have to break that. 1305, 1306 mark that I was talking about. And then the bottom of the cloud uh, would be the target almost at 1400. All right, on Bitcoin, um, just it's interesting if you look at a Bitstamp and you look at the monthly Bollinger Bands, uh, they have finally started to flare out a little bit. And it just gives you a little bit of perspective. Also, the median is um, above 300. So 
you know, if the median were to be tested, then uh, that would be a very important level, um, right above 300. Uh, a few months ago, the median was tested um, two times, pretty much. So that's pretty bullish, actually. And this flaring to the upside, I mean, you can see what happened last time. Of course, that was uh, Mt. Gox and all that kind of stuff. So probably could erase that part of the chart and kind of ignore it a little bit. But still, nonetheless, uh, the monthly is flaring out. Bitcoin on the daily over at Bitfinex, this level at 440 has been tested a lot, um, many times, and now even the level at 445 was tested a few times. Uh, so there's a lot of support over between 440, 445. We've seen that, and I think that um, widespread charts show us where we are right now. All right, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hey, uh, widespread, if we want to get in touch with you, how can we do it? Yeah, you can uh, reach me on uh, Twitter, Widespread BTC. I'm usually in the Whale Club Telegram, which you can find at whaleclub.org. And we do a, a show every Sunday, set up Sundays at 00 UTC. So if anybody has a chart, they want to kind of join the conversation. We do a little podcast. We do, uh, you know, we put all our charts out right right at the weekly uh, candle open, right? So, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, definitely check that out. Anyone can come on to TeamSpeak and listen or share your charts and discuss what's going on it's not only bitcoin also forex or commodities stocks everything is up for discussion so definitely check that out also make sure to subscribe to this channel world crypto network leave your comments below thanks for watching and talk to you next time